Hello and welcome back to Pandemic Playground with Dave. So we finally done it. We finally built out the mobile base. So let's check it out. Alright, so the long-awaited build of the mobile base is finally complete somewhat, not entirely, but it's at least operational from what I can guess. <laughs> I haven't let go of the landing gears yet from this um, the base of it to start driving it, so I'm not sure how it's going to operate. It may be too heavy for the wheels because we only have six wheels, three on each side. That's a risk we're going to have to take <laughs> for now. But if we have to add more wheels, I think we can add more wheels right around here. But it will change the look of the base itself or the mobile base itself, which is kind of something I'm not looking forward to. The base itself is slightly painted, not fully done, but it's got a little bit of the retro future, little metal looking like gold pipes with the mods on the side. Right now, they're all speed mods because I don't think I have the materials for other mods like Neon mods which is more preferable. Add a bit of a little front bumper here, a window and a gate in the front. No real purpose for it, it's just a little bit of design. And I changed the look of it a little bit more so it doesn't look too boxy. Unfortunately, it still looks a bit boxy, but I will have to continue to edit it a little bit more just to make it look a little bit better. But for the most part, I want to get something out there, functional and working fairly well. Not, not necessarily good, but fairly well. So I'm going to hope to see how that all turns out. So that's the front. The back is extremely paint plain only because we have that vehicle lifter or loader system in the back. So we had to keep it flat, but we did add a little bit of a connector there. So if we ever need to charge up, at least we have a point to do so. Or if we need to connect it to the economy base, we have some of a spot there, which honestly, I think I'm going to create a flying drone with cargo space so that I can connect to a economy base instead so this system technically has no way to charge itself except for maybe putting a turbine and a landing gear somewhere eventually but for now solar panels is all i got which is on the loader system itself so you've seen the outside let's take a look in the inside so the whole thing has not been planted down to the ground just yet so we do have to kind of climb this a little bit to get into the entryway which you can enter from this side or the loading station if it is coming if it's down on the bottom but of course we remember the big red button here we'll bring ourselves up and lock in place nice and flushed and we have a little space here to go in and again the system is made airtight as you see here nice fresh breeze of oxygen there <laughs> so we close the door here and we should be airtight so as I mentioned, the front of the first floor has a gate here. No real purpose, just to get some more armor. And we have a big tall glass here to kind of view the outside. And this is actually a fantastic view of Pertam, where you'll see a little bit of mountain area. The only thing that's ruining this view is probably my <laughs> ugly bridge. But that was used just to navigate to the other side. But yeah. This is not much in terms of just a viewing station, to be honest, that we can close this out. And this space here is completely empty. You could definitely put a lot more stuff around here, but I haven't decided on what yet. So we'll think about it. But of course, leave a comment down below if we should add stuff here, what to add here. Not too sure yet, other than decorative stuff. But yeah, coming up from here, staying on the first floor. We have all these passageways to kind of make a little bit of a design here. 
where we can go to the very back which is kind of dark here turn on lights and you can see the aesthetics of the large cargo container over here and you have the bit of a view back here as well which once again pretty nice view looking out these windows through Pertam <laughs> but of course two wheels unwelded is kind of messing up this whole nice postcard view too because <laughs> I have everything laying around everywhere oh look this is better this is a good view right here <laughs> all right so that's the pretty much the bottom section of it you can't really do much here everything's connected um, the the large cargo ports are upstairs so let's head upstairs from here so it's not necessarily second floor but like 1.5 or whatever you may call it I know down in here this half ladder system um, from the comments in previous episodes said this is probably not ideal because if you're in a very slanted area it's very hard to get to especially without jetpack so I might redesign this later on but for now we'll leave it as is uh, we should actually put a rail system here too so that we don't kind of fall off I think we can add a rail here maybe so we did a rail which is gonna be the diagonal rail can we put it here mm, unfortunately not because it's not necessarily real diagonal so yeah I think I'm gonna have to redesign this a little bit so that it does have a rail or maybe just the regular stairs but yeah this is I see I see how it can be an issue here okay but anyways moving on we have our two batteries here on this side we have two on the other side which I'm starting to think we need more so I might have to add two more on, over right over here and on the other side as well or even maybe more than that because this thing is a ginormous system way too big for what I need to be honest and I actually forgot to put some lights here so it is pretty dark interesting <laughs> all right so we got our air vents as you see here airtight system room is pressurized and of course this is where we can get to our large cargo containers so if we need to kind of get to it this is how to get to it um, I don't really see a big big need to do it but it's here if necessary and if I need more space I can put small cargo containers all around here um, yeah all around here it's for additional space and the opposite side of this is actually it's exactly the same thing no real difference I, mean, I wanted to make it exactly the same for now it's identical um, that way it works out pretty well and then we should head on to the second floor so heading on to the second floor right here immediately kind of closes out here just so we can see the large cargo containers on the top side no real point in doing that I just felt like doing something new so it's a bit of a viewpoint I need to add a little more aesthetics in the inside to make it look more um, I guess pleasurable in some ways <laughs> viewable viewable pleasurable scenic whatever you want to call it but yeah I, I could have just added armor place on the floor catwalks to flush it out to have a big open space but I don't know I just decided to close this out because at one point I wanted I kind of did want to make this floor airtight separate from the first floor and that's still something I might be thinking about doing um, but that was the main intent intent here for this closed out area but other than that we have two identical sides we have um, cryo chambers here armory lockers well yeah armories lockers more weapons some plants and some cargo freights here and the other side same exact thing um, the only difference is this cargo freight's a little bit different but this is just in case Don does join us on our adventures at Pertam which might happen we'll see so we have two sides here um, so two crowd chambers and instead of beds we have a restroom here with a door um, unfortunately you still kind of can peek inside which is no privacy whatsoever but I should I think I should probably change the door but I'll leave it as for now so we have a little toilet here and of course with a toilet we also have a shower system here as well and there's no real points for these it's just for aesthetic purposes so we have these nice little um, kind of habitation needs in some ways but again <laughs> no real privacy but maybe I'll change the doors later on I just like these doors the way it's kind of boxed out for now but yeah so this is the back end of it so now if we go to the next section which is a double door system so we have our airtight this here, I have no clue what I want to put here for now. 
but I do have my medical room or medical center here, which is operational. And we have our little bit of a kitchen slash bar sitting area, which is, I mean, if we have some guests, feel free to come by, sit down, definitely. But this is going to be more than two people, if anything. We have a kitchen, a little bit of a bar, bar of clan cola and coffee. But I haven't decided what to put exactly here yet. I did kind of want to put a sofa here, if, if anything, just to get the nice little viewpoint in the front. But this we leave empty for now. Again, leave a comment down below if we should add anything here on the second level. So this is the front second level, I would call it for now. I have no names for all the little spaces, but um, that's what it is for currently. All right, so we discovered the first floor, half floor, second floor. Now we have a third floor. Surprisingly, really didn't want a third floor, but it turned into a third floor anyways, which is actually the bridge. Why is this color gold? I don't know, or yellow. <laughs> Let me change that really quick. There we go. Okay, so this is the bridge here up front. We have a control rooms or control centers here and here added the seats surrounding it just to for aesthetic purposes that so we can sit here and put our hands down to view the controls and everything like that. I'm going to have some projections up here relatively soon, but of course we have our main cockpit here or control seat and we have our spare control seats for additional visitors as well or guests that we can control the system together or whatever the case is and of course we have some lcd screens here up front just to give us some details if needed so we if we're in here we can pretty much see in front of us inside of us pretty good view of everything this here is just to give us more um, information in the front uh, if we ever need to edit it for i don't know gps locations our inventory you know all that kind of stuff but of course we do have big old LCD screens back here to give us more space for information too. So the third floor is airtight. The bridge is airtight along with the second floor over here. So this kind of shares its own. I got to find a way to kind of separate everything. Uh, I kind of don't want to make a big doorway, but I might have to do so. Just to separate all the different air, air ventilation system. Because if there's a puncture or a hole right here, it's going to affect the bridge also. So each room does need to be adjusted slightly in terms of the air venting. But other than that, there's a double door system here, offset doors. And that leads to our flat bed in some ways. And this is where we're going to be able to house maybe two vehicles. I'm thinking the croc is going to be here anyways on top. I think I gave it just enough space actually, uh, which is not ideal because we probably want more space. But we'll leave it as that. And then we have this one for our drone that we want to kind of create as well. So the idea why it's on two different hinges and a connector is the same idea we have on the base where we could do a script to control it and move it up and down um, as much as possible. So we can connect directly into our rover system or ship systems there or drone systems i can call it I'm not going to make a ship for myself but i'm going to do a drone system so we can connect into the economy bases other than that added a bit of a fin system here to kind of hide the piston back here which we have the piston for the loading piece there these turbines will go away eventually i m maybe keep them maybe not but if anything i probably need a little bit more turbines a little bit higher and add a magnetic plate or a landing gear somewhere so we can stick to the ground and charge up that way if necessary. But for now, the turbines here just to charge up the systems as much as possible. But of course, we do have the four solar panels, which is not much at all to charge up a, a rover at this size. But the seat here, um, maybe I'll put a seat, a cockpit next time. I don't know. I'll leave this one for now. Or maybe a button to control but this here is going to con control our little loading system so that we can extend it and drop it from there and it is working out pretty well i know there's some mentions of 
connecting these two pistons and hinges may cause clang eventually and i gotta say it may but in my experience it usually doesn't if it's set up correctly so we'll leave it as that i know people were telling me to also change this block to maybe a blast door block which is a good idea but for the most part it's not clanging it out so i'm i'm gonna leave it for the time being until something does break <laughs> But yeah, as you've seen in the past, we have a refinery assembler. They're all hidden away here, exposed to the outside air, which is perfectly fine. I closed it out in the inside so that our air tight our, our rover is airtight in that sense. And of course we added connectors, connectors and pipes um, so we can add more connections if necessary. But yeah, this is the outside flatbed area. It looked a little bit bigger before, but now it looks kind of smaller for whatever reasons, but it is what it is, and I did have to put these conveyors outside so we can make extra connections if necessary. For the most part, it's we don't need all this. I just added there just for aesthetics to make this into like an eye um, for fun <laughs> in that sense. But it's, again, not 100% necessary in that sense. But the rest of it is going to be the outer piece, which not much to really cover except the turrets. The turrets here, none of this is really set up correctly yet, but you have three turrets on each side. So you have one, two, three here. And of course, on the other side, three turrets or four turrets, actually. <laughs> Sorry, I can't count. There's one all the way back there as well. So four, tur four turrets and also two missile launchers on each side. Although I don't have mats for missiles, but of course, why not just make them just in case? So you have the missile launchers here, turrets on the sides. And I think that's going to be more than enough uh, weaponry uh, to have for the time being once we do include the NPC mods um, in the near future. But other than that, we have ample lights, spotlights, two in the back here. We have four in the front and, and, also, and also the air vent to decompress so we can fill up the oxygen tank that's actually in here and in the system and that's how we're going to get our oxygen within Pertam inside our mobile base here so the next thing to do is really take all that's down here which is the current base and then transfer all into our two large cargo containers so maybe that's <laughs> not enough two car containers since we have three but we also do have this grinder slash welding crane system we will pretty much get rid of this it's unnecessary for our travel needs so we are pretty much going to take this big boy throughout her time and explore what's out there so we're going to look for other economy bases other abandoned settlements and even some uh, stationary bases once we include the mod for those NPCs. The only problem I'm going to see here is that I won't be able to travel and transverse across this crevice anymore unless I extend the bridge a lot more. Because this system itself is way too wide for my thin little bridge here. So I now have a few bounties to bring back. I think eventually I'm just going to make a drone system um, or attachment for my croc or the rover, travel across and submit my bounties that I have currently with me. All right, so if you didn't know, hitting semicolon or semicolon will bring up your active contracts. Honestly, I didn't know that for some time. I, I pretty much have to search it. <laughs> and these are the current acquisitions I have. These don't run out in time. So I'm going to have to kind of make these or, you know, Take some of these and transport them into the economy base across there. What I'm going to do is probably use the croc. Um, yeah, I'm probably use the croc and pretty much walk there. Walk there, a ride there and submit those um, pieces. But I don't think I can carry 37 canvases. Maybe I could, but I don't think I can carry 866 interior plates on me itself. But of course we can check. All right, so we can only carry 226. So we definitely need either a drone system with the cargo 
or we have to do what I mentioned previous episode is to actually include some kind of hinge system and a connector system to go upwards so then that way we could connect to that connector and I kind of have an idea of how to do so so let's kind of get that put together the mobile base is gonna have to wait for just a little bit more I'm gonna have to redesign it just a little bit just to make it less boxy in some ways and of course I'm waiting for some of your comments to let me know what I should put in different floors that are completely empty some let me know of some pretty decent ideas all right so first thing first I think I want to get rid of this thing because this is the most ugliest thing that I have here oh I'm just making it freak out a little bit because I have some inventory here which is the interior plates let me just grab all this and it looks like I pretty much destroyed the face of the croc a little bit at some point yeah I think I did and I think this happened when I hit a bump at one point pretty hard so gonna have to replace this and should be simple enough we got this here and one of these tips here right there I think that's what kind of just blew out looks like I'm missing a great thing there too or maybe what's it called the window barred windows yeah so that's what I was missing as well so the barred windows can go right there if I had girders all right so I got rid of the ugly braces for the croc here so I'm gonna attempt to kind of drag this guy into our grinding system if I could ah if I didn't have bit of an issue here maybe I can drag it over but it's a bit of a tilt or so it's kind of weird you actually block me from being able to do that let me just move it a little bit along the way that way and move it this way is it gonna work kind of and I think we're kind of getting stuck here huh that's unfortunate I was hoping that was going to be able to let me push it through and just throw in the grinder let me see if I can extend that there we go alright perfect toss that in there turn on our nifty little button and whoop awesome I'm just gonna yo-yo around here hopefully it stays inside doesn't fly out and get the parts back minimal parts to be honest but I just like watching this grinder system work and of course it popped out <laughs> So let's throw that back in there. Oh, if of course it gets stuck. Ah, forget it. <laughs> as much as I wanted to not grind it down, let's just take care of it anyways. Get the parts back. And of course I took out a piece of this, but it's fine. And a good idea that was mentioned in the comments, add a sensor. So when I fall in here, it will stop the grinders. Definitely a really, really good idea. Um, something I'm not going to do for the time being. Because this is definitely going to go away soon. Although I should I say that as I'm kind of rebuilding the ramp here. Which I shouldn't even bother. But let's turn this off. And what I really want to do. How come this thing is looking kind of awful? I'm not sure. The, the front used to have the merge blocks. that made it look like a nice little jaw. But uh, it, it's not too bad. It just needs a, a kind of a closing here. Which I don't think existed before. But we'll leave as that for now. All right, so we need a piston system to go upwards to connect to the connector. And from what I recall, it wasn't very high, but it was kind of high. So maybe what we can do is put a hinge here and is and also the other side we're gonna connect it to, where it can fold down towards down here to a point maybe 45 60 degree angle or something like that and then we could bring it up nine degrees straight up and then up to the connector because it's going to be connected to um its own little connector as well so yeah i think that might be the way to go and a lot of it is going to be connected via the small ports not the large port of the connector because I don't think we could put a large piston here and it's going to be way too heavy if I did that anyway. 
So we're gonna do that. We're gonna take a piston, piston, a rotor. <clears throat> so we're gonna take a hinge. We're gonna pick a small one, which is not this way. What we wanna do is flip this up a bit. So I guess we're gonna have to do a small conveyor here. And then we're gonna do a hinge system right on top of it. Not like that, but kind of on the conveyor itself, but looks like I can't do it without jumping or getting myself some footing here. Okay. <laughs> that took longer than I needed to to get up here. Alright, so we're gonna put one here. And I like to put the two notches going forward for the most part. So we'll put this hinge system here. And we need probably several pistons to go upwards, probably two or three. I think ideally two, but I think we're going to need three just in case. So I'm going to put them all up here like so. That's actually perfect the way exactly I wanted it. So we just need all the parts for this and we should put a connector up there as well. So let's get some parts and get this thing done. All right, here we go. So what I do need to do in order to connect this is pretty much get rid of this piston head here, and then we can add our curve block or curve tubes and this tube itself, which is done there. What I want to do also, because everything's shaking for whatever reason, it might be the pistons. Or at least a new piston. So all these pistons we're gonna do shared inertia. So we're fine. The hinge we'll leave alone for now. And what we do need here is to add the piston head itself. So adding the piston head right there. We can weld it up. And of course we have to use build vision to get this attached. And it is attached. Perfect. So it's still shaking, so it does freak out a little bit. So that's a little unfortunate. Maybe because I put these blocks there. Because it stopped shaking the moment I took it out. Alright, so we're going to take that out. Take this out here. And what else is there? These blocks here. I guess for scaffolding purposes. I forget there's a ladder here. Which we can use to climb up. So there we go. These can go. Scaffolding. And if we had to find a way to connect all this. We probably can. Using merge blocks. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and we can of course make this look a little bit better if necessary. So what I would do is probably use these light armor blocks here. Like so. And then connect it with the half armor blocks. And of course, we can also do something with this too. Like that. And close it out with a the corner. There. So we can just, just kind of cover this if we need to. Just for aesthetic purposes. Which is perfectly fine. Minimal parts. And we should probably do the same exact thing back here. So we're at this design. We did this one. Um, no. Alright, so that's all welded up. See, as you see here, that just makes it look a little bit better. Uh, it's not that that great, but <laughs> it does add a little bit more details to it in some ways. <laughs> but I do need to fix the seat problem here, but let's just enter it from here. Looks like lightning's coming, which is pretty bad. Let me take off my antenna. I do have an antenna on this thing too. So maybe we turn that off and hope the antennas on the base will protect us. Hopefully. It might not. Alright, so ideally what we want to do here is have the hinges, both of them. So I'm just going to have these two here um, grouped up. And then also the pistons, that needs to be grouped up as well. That'll be all this, so I'm just gonna call them P's. 
And they're all shared inertia just in case. And those are grouped up. So the hinges is where we want to play around with. So we want to make sure we're not driving around like this. So we want to bring it down if we can. So the hinges. Um, looks like we have a problem here. So they might be kind of stuck. <laughs> so that sucks. Is this stuck against the cargo container? Huh, interesting. So the hinges, let's just let's just reset zero. And we increase the torque for now and change the velocity. No. So something is stuck. Well that sucks. What is stuck about this system? Ow. And of course I get shocked by lightning just like that. Okay, so what is going on is we both we have both hinges. Let's see. All our hinges are just these two hinges. We don't have shear inertia on there. We have maximum torque, which we don't really need. And the velocity. It's moving as you see there. But it's not connected. Okay. So there's my problem. So let me see what we can do about this. So that was that one. I think I didn't connect it correctly. So let me see here. This one. This one is moving. No, that's the other one. So this one. Is it the same thing? Yeah, it's the same thing. So whatever happened, it released off of the hinges, it looks like. Which is a little odd, but what we need to do is just detach the hinge. Hopefully it falls off. Oop, it didn't fall off. So we got to get to the hinge part done. So then we, we got to add the hinge part itself up onto that piston over there. So it's not allowing me to do so. So what happened here? All right, so either I placed it wrong or something happened to it. I don't know for sure. So I can't put the hinge part there right now because it's not working that way for some reason. So what we're going to have to do is actually get into our seat or find a control panel somewhere. We're just going to raise our... So we're just going to raise the pistons itself up a bit. Um, that might do it. I don't know. So let's see what happens when we raise the pistons. So if we raise the pistons. No, that's not going to do anything. So for whatever reasons, that bottom piston wasn't connected to the hinge. Either I built it wrong or whatever the case may be. <laughs> I don't know. But either way. Uh, actually, no, that's not the case, right? Because... If we have one hinge left, we don't have one hinge left. So maybe, no, no, we have two. One has nothing on there. So one hinge left. And even we move left and right. Look, it's not really doing anything because that's not attached either. So when I attached the piston head on top, it probably created a bit of an issue where it kind of just disconnected off of the hinge for some reason. Which that is... Pff, bit of an issue there but yeah so we took this hinge off as you see here this whole system is still kind of floating so um it's not even attached to anything but it's just still there which is a bit odd to me to be honest <laughs> that is super weird so let me see if i drive this thing what happens all right so before i drive then we'll see if i can turn the pistons on and off and i can so it is attached somehow, not sure how, <laughs> and that's weird because I don't think it can be attached to the hinge over there or the cargo on the side. So that's a bit odd that's doing that. So oops. now I'm going to have to hitch a ride here. Um, this is unfortunate, but I do have to create 
bit of a hole here. Okay. So I'm not sure what's going on here. It's a little off. <laughs> I can't move it. So I'm going to have to redo this really quick. All right. So I redid it. I extended it out a little bit more so that hopefully the hinges work that way. So same names hinges here. I'm going to change the velocity and hope for the best. All right. Perfect. It's working. All right. So where are we exactly? A little hard to tell. So the hinges is going. The negative is that way. Okay. So we want to change the limits a little bit. So we have to go backward. Okay. So that's fine. So the lower limit. All right, so I have the hinges the reverse side, which is fine. Not exactly what I wanted, but that's the way I did it. So the upper limit should be zero and the rest is going negative. So we go negative. We're going to go this way. Okay. So we don't want to get too low. So we're going to say about 60. I think 60 is probably ideal. So it's going to do negative 60 here and then put our velocity that way. We're not hitting anything. Yeah, we're good. So that way it keeps it a little lower and flatter in that way. I think before it kind of clanged out by hitting the cargo containers there. But at least this way we have a bit of a connector that way in that sense. So what we're going to have to do now, of course, we want to put our groupings together. So that's going to be the hinge reverse and our pistons reverse. And our connector, which we didn't name it, but things connected to, to switch locks so we can lock in. So that's going to be the way to do it. Another way to do it is add another bit of a joint system so it's more flushed. Would be added probably right over here. So this can go flat this way. So it goes diagonally this way and then flat right here. So that's the ideal way of doing it. But I'm just going to do the cheap, quick way. Don't know for sure if I can transfer some of these items here, but we're gonna have to see and try. I hope it's long enough so that I can actually reach. I don't waste my time here, but we will find out right about now. All right, we made it to the economy base in its little safety zone. And I think I made the piston a little too long. So we're probably going to have to play around with it a little bit in terms of the height or the maximum of the pistons here. So I think I have to line this up properly, which is getting close right around here. I think that's going to be it. We can bring the piston up and connect that way. Okay, so we definitely have too many pistons to be honest. So we do need to identify some of the top ones really quickly. So I'm not sure which is which, but I think we can play around. Ooh. All right. So I got to go out and identify which one are my top ones really quickly here. Um, and also before we do that, let's throw in the interior plates as well. Let's just throw in plates and looks like I can't store more than that. Um, that might be an issue <laughs> that I didn't check, but it's all right. We just gotta hold on. We're just going to do this. This one's going to be the T piston or top piston Oop, wrong button. This one too. T piston fine. And once we get back into our little thing here. Okay, so the top pistons or the T's. Which is these two. These are the top one. We're going to reduce, reduce the maximum distance for now. Extend our pistons up. We have perfect. And then we'll take our piston with the T's, these two, and 
increase the maximum distance just a tiny bit until we can get connected which looks like right around there right around there and I think I need to aim this a little bit better so we're just gonna back this guy up a little bit bring it forward and there we can lock in so we need to change the connector as we said before the reason this is connector one switch lock hit lock we are in okay perfect so the only issue is that I cannot bring or move the interior plates there this is way too much weight so if I added a small no, a medium cargo container, that might do it, but I don't think I have the mats for it currently. So I should have checked how much I could carry before I got out here. But I guess we can always do that for the next one, for the next time. So we're just going to go get the contracts, at least get some money currently. I'll accept the contract so we can give a canvas back. Or not back, but give the canvas through the small grid. Confirm. Okay. And we give the silicone, and that's going to be from the small grid as well, which we could have probably carried anyways. That's 5,000 space credits there. If I hit finish here and do small grid, will it work? It works. Interesting. Perfect. So, is it because I had too much stuff in there that I can move it? Or it kind of glitched down in a way where it, it, it found it in the connected rover but it just kind of negated that it wasn't on the connector itself <laughs> so that's kind of interesting so let me see this theory here so we have a the connector uh where's the connector right here so the interior plates which i should have some interior plates left right um i do not i had 900 of them before so I'm not sure what happened there but I wasn't able to move the interior plates before and not a significant amount at least because of the weight but it did take up all my interior plates for some reason I didn't have eight had more than 866 so oh no I have it in my inventory so that's 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 probably what it is okay so let's just move that over all right so let's just get back to this um Interior plates, yeah, see, we can transfer it over to that connector. We can put it to this one. We can put on, we can't put in connector C. We can put on the other large container, but we can't put on the connector. So that's interesting. So you need a large ports for these to actually work. Again, it kind of just negated all that just by plugging in. So that's really, really interesting. And looks like I can do a lot more of these acquisition missions if necessary. Um, maybe the next time I travel here will be... Nope. I was going to say with the mobile base, but I can't cross the crevice. So that's not an ideal thing. So, so depending on the issues or timing, I may do a little bit more just to get some more money really quickly. Let me see what kind of acquisitions do we have here so i need them gold we don't have magnesium powder i don't think we have too much of which we do need to find magnesium sooner or later we don't have enough of that radio components or cobalt ingots this is oh i thought I, I thought it would be a lot more than that okay so not too much in terms of acquisition so i'm just gonna skip that for now come back next time for it but we just need to head back home really quick and plan our next trip. All right, so we're gonna disconnect here and take our pistons back down. And of course, we can bring this guy here. Done. We are we're good. So we're just gonna. Take this rover, bring it home, 
and see what else we can do in the next one. All right, so we made it home, and it looks like I didn't realize, but I made the croc almost the same color as the new mobile base here. <laughs> Not a big deal, but we do need to lower the mobile base eventually so we can throw the croc onto it as well. So that's going to be something we're going to have to try out sooner or later. But again, just going to have to design the thing a little bit more, just a tiny bit. And then we can move forward with our Season 2 of Surviving Pertam, The Wastelands, and traveling and exploring the planet itself. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So if you did, hit that thumbs up, like the video. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell to be alerted of upcoming videos. Feel free to drop a comment down below. And of course, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.